time and get comfortable and let your eyes close and let your hands go to any place that feels good for your shoulders. So think about as you move your hands around how your shoulders feel. All right? You can even kind of roll a little bit with your shoulders or lift them up and down a little bit. And then as you lengthen up through the crown of your head, start to watch your breath now coming in and going out through your nose. So feeling the breath, imagining the breath is coming equally in and out through both sides of your nose. breath and then we'll release our arms on out beside us here now and let's inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead and let our exhale bring our hands right down together in front of our hearts and then we'll reverse and inhale the hands right up through the midline and on the exhale open the arms on back out and down nice inhale here and on the exhale, twist to your right. I'm gonna go ahead and mirror you. So bring yourself around, feel where whatever part of your feet are touching the floor. Just feel the floor with your feet a little bit. And one more inhale. And let your exhale draw you all the way on back around through center and into the other direction. And one more inhale. Let your exhale draw you on back into center again. And let's come forward. So if you're in your chair and you'd feel better to separate your feet out a little bit, rest your elbows above your knees, do. You know, on the floor, if you need to stretch your legs long, do as well. So that when you come forward from your low back and you just find the hips here, get the low back into a little bit of a stretch. And you know, you can go farther, you can go farther down with your hands if you're in your chair, if that's comfortable, or you can go farther out with your hands if you're on the floor. Just be mindful, try to let your head release and hang. Good, one more breath. slowly make our way on back up to sitting and bring the feet on back however you choose to sit let your arms come on out beside you again and let's inhale the arms straight on out from the shoulders flex your hands for a second and draw your hands in closer towards your shoulders and then as you exhale press out into your hands press into your feet a little bit too and then again inhaling bring the hands in towards your shoulders and as you exhale press out into the heels of the hands again and now let's release our arms down and make one big arm circle, bringing the arms forward and up and as far back behind yourself as you can. Don't force it, you know that. And then reverse the circle, reach back first and then forward and up overhead and letting the arms come on down beside you. And stretch your legs out. Remember which leg you have in front, cross-legged. Stretch your legs out for a second here. And now move through your feet and your ankles. So let your feet circle around a little bit. You can go the same direction if that feels more comfortable to you. Or you can go opposite, right? Just keep reversing a few times so you really feel those feet and feel your ankles. Good. And then we'll come on back. And if you're cross-legged, switch the cross to your legs. Bring your other leg in front. And now this time, let's focus a little bit on our navel. And as you inhale, let the navel come forward. Draw to one side. Exhale the navel towards your spine. You're making a circle. And then inhale when the navel comes forward again. So keep the circle of the navel going in the same direction. So the inhale brings the navel forward and the exhale brings it back towards your spine. So it really wakes up your belly and your hips and your low back your side waist, right? 
You can even feel your ribs a little bit here. So take your time, stop where you choose before you reverse directions, and then you're just gonna go the opposite way with these circles, really focusing on that breath, inhaling when the navel comes forward, exhaling when it comes back. Good. And then finish off to come on back into center. Let's bring our hands right together in front of our hearts. And then just fold your pointer fingers down, right? So they're just coming down. Next will come your middle fingers. So now stay with your hands just like this for a second. Feel your pinkies and your ring fingers still really connected and your thumbs there. Let your thumbs come inward towards your breastbone and just take a couple of breaths here. Enjoy feeling that, that mood of your hands. And then we'll just extend the fingers that were folded down back up. So now you're going to come right back into your prayer hands. And we'll inhale the hands right up through the midline. We're going to lower our left arm down and come on over into side stretch here. So breathing into the right ribs, let yourself feel that sense of stretch and reach through the fingertips. One more breath, and then we'll come on up. We're gonna switch arms. So as the left arm floats on up there and you start to reach up and then over to the side, really feel your left sitting bone drawing down. Breathe into the left ribs there. Nice, and then we'll come on back, all the way back down again. And then from here, let's inhale the arms up into a wide V. Turn your pinkies towards each other, feel your feet in the floor. Really just seated mountain with your arms overhead. So feel as equal as you can between the sides of your body. And if it feels good to look up a little bit too, don't force it, don't do anything that makes your neck feel uncomfortable. But if you like to rise your chin up a little bit and look up, do. And then on your next exhale, bring your gaze back forward and softly allow your hands to come back down to be in front of your heart. And we're going to make our way around towards hands and knees. You know it is not necessary to be on your knees at all. So you can use your chair. You can, if you want, stand up with your hands resting on your legs like this and move through your cat cow, all right? Or you can also be down on your forearms if you don't want to be in your hands. So if your wrists really give you issues, right, and you know that it feels much better for you not to be on your hands with that angle at your wrist, then adjust accordingly, right? And then just take your time, slowly start to flow through the spine with your breath. So remember, traditionally, exhales draw you into that cat pose where your tailbone is dropped down and you're rounding into your back and inhales send the tailbone back and up the belly melts down the chest melts down as you come into cow but there's absolutely nothing wrong with breathing the total opposite either right so you can play with that in other words keep breathing and if the breathing changes, like which pose you're doing when you exhale, then don't worry about it. Just let the body just flow through. If you have some little places that feel tight or sore and you need to stay, you know, in one of the poses or even between the poses a little bit to let the, the space that feels a little tight release, do it. So in other words, being really mindful of how you feel instead of just you know, rolling your way through your spine without thinking. Finishing off the one you're on, coming to a more neutral spine. And we're gonna bring our left foot forward and our right foot back to find lunge. Now, how far back you step that right foot? Remember that is totally up to you. And you wanna be really mindful of getting your feet a little bit apart like you're on very narrow railroad tracks. Mindful of that front knee, bending no farther forward than your ankle. And just enjoy, feel the length in the back of the body. Let yourself open up through the back of that right leg, in your calf, behind your knee. Good, we're gonna switch legs. So however you like best to do that. 
And again, very narrow railroad tracks for the feet. So feeling pretty good up into your hips, being mindful of the bend of that front knee. And then just enjoy opening up the back of the left leg. Feel your shoulders drawn down away from your ears. Good. And let's switch again. I know a lot of you in the lunge like to kind of get a little more into your legs and hips by coming up out of your hands a little bit, maybe even putting your left hand up there on your thigh, or, you know, you just experiment. You don't need to lift a hand or hands up, but you can. And then we're gonna switch legs again. So again, once you feel really solid in the pose and you feel strong there, if it feels good to lift a hand or hands up, you can. <clears throat> good. And then we're going to step forward. Hey, come on in, Hi, Carolyn. Sorry, That's all right. Come on in. So <laughs> <laughs> come on in to standing forward bend. Just join us. And, okay. and we're still in a little warm up. So you're, you're in good place here. So you know you're welcome in your forward bend to bring your hands down towards blocks. You can use blocks on your chair seat so that you're up on your forearms if that feels even better. In other words, really as you come forward, you don't want to feel any discomfort in your low back. And you do want to allow your head to hang. Let yourself feel your knees soften a little bit so you're not locking out in your knees. <clears throat> Feel the breath coming in to expand your ribs in all directions. Nice, full, deep breath. Let your head feel really heavy if possible. One more breath. And then from here, we'll bring our hands up to our hips, press into our feet and rise up to standing and inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And let our exhale bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. Coming into your mountain pose. So take your time. You know if you need to kind of walk in place a little bit, do rearrange anything or even look at your feet to make sure you don't have one foot like turned out more than the other. We're attempting to get our feet fairly parallel and then as you bring your gaze on forward and out, just, just allow your hands to come to meet in front of your heart. So if you can, as you stand here in your mountain pose, whether your eyes are opened or closed, imagine you're looking way out beyond the wall, like you're looking out towards the horizon. And then from there, just gently press down a little bit into your feet, like you're pushing the floor away from you. But feel like you're lifting your thighs up now, like you're creating some space in your knees. Your thighs are gently engaging upward. So it's, it's not like you're just settled in and, and supporting yourself with your bones. You are definitely engaged a little bit in the muscles of your legs and your belly is engaging a little bit. And then your hips are stacked over your ankles and your shoulders over your hips. And your hands are just really nicely, gently together there. It's almost like you are an electrical current that you plugged yourself in, right? You have this complete circuit through your body. And then we'll unfold our arms right on down beside us and inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, bend your knees, come on forward from your hips into your standing forward bend, wherever you like your hands to go. Let your next inhale help you find a nice long flat back. You can put your hands onto your legs or onto your chair or onto your blocks. And we're gonna step the right foot back and come into lunge. Draw your shoulders down, take your time, let yourself again find that lunge. Zip up your low belly a little bit. And we're gonna make our way into a down dog. So if you have your hands on the chair or the blocks, when you reach back with your sit bones here and your tailbone, you don't have as much weight on your hands. You also don't have a, a deep wrist crease. And in your dog, on the, if your hands are on the floor, you really wanna feel the same way, right? 
So you gotta find what feels okay for your shoulders, for your wrists, for your hands. Let yourself walk a little bit in your dog, bend one knee at a time. Good, and optional here, come on out towards a plank. Now you don't have to do a full plank. You can go on just a little forward, just to put a little weight in your hands. You can go all the way like you're gonna do a push up, or you can go down onto your forearms and do a forearm plank. Or put your knees down and do a half plank, right? Good, and then we're gonna make our way back again in towards that downward facing dog pose. Reaching back, letting ourselves find that sense of as much space as you can imagine in your spine here. Hug your elbows gently towards each other. And from here, we'll bring our right foot forward to come into lunge. Does not matter how you get there. So if you're on the floor and you need to put a knee or knees down, do. Hands can be on the chair, hands can be on the block. And then we'll come on back into standing forward bend again. Feet hips distance apart and parallel. And again, just be mindful. Let yourself release to wherever you feel good to be in your forward bend. I know some of you like to go ahead and hang and even hold your own elbows. That is so not for everybody's back, but if it works for you, remember sometimes support of hands on blocks is enough. And sometimes it feels really good to use the chair so full breaths, expanding your ribs as you inhale. See if you can imagine on your exhales that your face just gets softer and softer. Good, we're gonna bend our knees from here, bring our hands to our hips and come right on up to standing and inhale our arms out and up overhead. And let our exhale bring our hands down together in front of our heart. And let's sit back in a little chair. Now pretend you have a chair behind you that's high. So if you were actually going to sit down, your body would come forward, right? And your hips would shift back a little bit. Your knees are bent. You don't have to go deeply. You can just feel the legs working. Feel your thighs. Press a little bit into your feet. Come all the way on back up. Stay here for a breath in your mountain pose. And then one more time, letting yourself sit again into that chair pose, right? And now bring your hands forward, clasp your fingers, send your pointer finger out, look right out over the top of that pointer finger. So you're really bringing your focus right out and beyond that, like you're pointing at something that you're looking at through the wall. One more breath. And now as you press into your feet, rise your hands up, try to keep them together if you can. If you need to bend your elbows a little bit, do. Let the arms rise on up. <clears throat> and then bend your elbows and let your hands come clasped behind your head. Hug your elbows in towards your face just a little bit. Press into your, head, your hands with your head. So your head is pushing into your hands slightly. Your chin is still staying parallel to the floor. Good, and then open your elbows on out to the side here now. And we're gonna unfold our arms right on down beside us. And this time, inhale your arms forward and up. They can widen into a V if you want. And then as you exhale, bend your knees and come on forward into standing forward bend. And let your next inhale help you find that long, flat back. Again, hands can be wherever you want, on your chair, on your blocks, on your legs. And this time, we'll step left foot back to come into that lunge. Draw your shoulders down away from your ears. Let yourself feel the legs here working. Inhale and exhale. We're going to come into downward facing dog pose. So you know in that dog, remember if your hands are on the chair, your heels are on the floor. Same thing if your hands are on the blocks, right? Chances are if your hands are on the blocks, you step back, but your heels are still on the floor, but you're still lengthening your spine. And then the lower the hands go, whether it's lower on the blocks or to the floor, then you might be having your heels hover off the mat, right? So let your next inhale bring you out towards a plank. Again, you don't have to do a full plank. You don't even have to come forward to a plank, right? If you wanna put your forearms down if you're on the floor, you can come down to your forearms or even on the chair you can. And then we'll come on back again into down dog. 
And this time, left foot is going to come forward. Now, if you need to put a knee or knees down to get that left foot into your lunge, do. And then we'll come all the way back into standing forward bend. Feet, hips distance apart and parallel. And again, be really mindful of your own back. Whatever support you need or hold your elbows if you want. I mean, some of you might want to put your hands behind your legs or up on your back. If you need elbows to rest above your knees, that's a really good way to support your back. And then just breathe. See if you can feel like you're accepting your breaths in as fully and deeply as you can. Both your inhales and your exhales. So you feel the ribs expanding in all directions as you inhale. And you feel the ribs kind of coming back in as you exhale. And we will bring our hands up to our hips from there, press into our feet and rise up. Inhale the arms all the way out and up. And let our exhale bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. Let's inhale the hands right up through the midline. Let the arms be like wings as you bend your knees and come forward to standing forward bend. And on your next inhale, find that long flat back again, wherever you want your hands to be. And we're gonna step into down dog from here. So hands are whatever height you like to try at, sort of be in your dog. Reach your way back, hug your elbows towards each other. And on your next inhale, come on out towards a plank. Again, you do not have to do a whole plank. And if you want to do a back bend, you can. You can go down to your belly on the floor and come to your forearm. You can come through for an up dog or a cobra. Or don't do a back bend at all if it doesn't feel good to do it. And then we'll come on back again into downward facing dog pose. Walk a little bit if you can. Maybe you even want to turn your head side to side a bit. Let your neck go. Good, and we're going to do that same thing. We're going to come on out towards a plank. Again, back bend is optional. So you can come to the floor and come up to your forearms to a sphinx, or you can come through for an up dog or a cobra. Totally optional, remember. And then we'll come on back into down dog again. Good, and this time let's bring our left foot forward to come into lunge. However you need to get it there. And then we'll step all the way back into standing forward bend. So check out your feet. Just make sure you don't have, you know, one foot turning in or out a whole bunch more than the other. You're pretty even in your feet here. And then just breathe. Let your head hang. If you're able to release to hold your elbows, do. But you know if that's too much, support yourself. You can rest your elbows above your knees. You can put your hands on the chair or the blocks. Full deep breaths. Appreciate those breaths expanding your rib cage. Let it feel really good. And then from here, we're going to let our hands come on back up to our hips, bend our knees, press into our feet equally, and rise straight on up. We'll inhale our arms out and up overhead. And as our exhale bring our hands down, brings our hands down, come into your mountain pose feeling about as lightheaded as you think you can, right? Feeling the top of the head floating up towards the ceiling. Feeling the feet in the floor, but a lot of energy more flowing through the body now. So you feel a little lighter than you did when you began. And one of the most interesting parts is coming into mountain pose so many times throughout class and having it feel like a different pose, right? Because you feel so different, differently from the time you begin class through each series that we go through. You feel even different when you come back to your mountain pose. And then we'll go ahead and release our arms on down beside us. Shake out a little bit and move around if you need to. You can walk around. I'm gonna flip my chair around to turn the back of it to face me. And um, we're going to come into some warriors. We're going to start with warrior two. We're going to step our right foot back and step our left foot forward. 
and you can use your chair there for support with your left hand if you need. Bend that left knee, let yourself, as you find that left foot parallel to the long edge of the mat, you bend the knee, you can see that you're not going out beyond your toes with your bend. And that right foot's about parallel to the back edge of your mat. And then from there, just float your arms up a little higher than your shoulders for a second. Let your shoulders melt down. Then lower the hands down so you can look right out over the top of that left hand comfortably. So you're looking out over the top of the hand. But remember to reach back just as equally through the right fingertips as you're reaching forward through the left. Good. We're going to turn the left palm up. Bring your right hand down to your right leg back there. Slide the right hand lower down and reach the left arm up. All the way up like you're trying to touch the ceiling. Nice full breath here into the left side. And on your exhale, you'll come into your side angle, whether you put your hand on your chair or on your thigh, or maybe your forearm can go down to your chair or your thigh. And you can add the right arm up into line with the right side of the body, if possible. Don't force it, and if you need to be up higher, be up higher. Be on your hand, either on the chair or on your leg there. Good, we're gonna come on back into warrior two. Press those feet away from each other as we come. Now just bring your hands into prayer hands in front of your heart. Let yourself just bring your hands to meet there in front of your chest. And unfold the arms down. We're going to bring our hands over to find lunge. So you're going to have to rotate now that right heel directly behind your foot. You can go down any level you want. You can be up on the back of the chair. You can go down to the seat of the chair. You can use your block. And then we'll bring our left hand up to our left hip. Just stay here for a second. And then roll that left shoulder up towards the ceiling. And if you can put your palm flat down on your sacrum, do. So that you turn your palm down towards your back. And some of you even might like to lift that arm up. If it feels really good to stretch the left arm up from your shoulder, do. If your shoulder says, uh-uh, just don't do it. So one more breath here, and then we'll go ahead and bring our hand back down to lunge. We're going to step forward and get our feet right underneath us. Let your knees soften a little bit here, press into your feet. Come on up to standing and inhale your arms all the way out and up overhead. Let your exhale bring your hands down together in front of your heart, coming into that mountain pose. See if you can shift a little bit forward and back on your feet. Not so much you're going to fall over, just enough to feel a gentle back and forth movement there. And then try to center yourself and do the same thing going right to left, which is more like a swaying feeling, kind of relaxing really, especially if you start to think about the swaying getting less and less and less and less, right? Till you end up right there in the middle. Feeling very balanced, front to back, side to side. And unfold your arms right on down beside you. Shake out a little bit if you need to walk around before we do the other side, do. Because this time it'll be the left foot that stepped back into warrior two. So again, you can have your hand on your chair. You know, if you need your chair more, you can put that right foot more underneath the chair if you need to. Line up your heels, get that right foot parallel to the long edge of your mat, bend that front knee, and then be mindful of this back leg. Remember, it's attempting to be straight, but you want to be really careful about how you have it turned out back there. And we're going to start to float our arms up, up higher than our shoulders for a second. And then when they do come right back down and you turn to look out over the top of that right hand, reach equally out through both sets of fingertips. And now, if you can, be aware of your feet in the floor. Feel as equal as you can between your feet. Maybe even kind of imagine you're trying to make your mat longer with your feet. Good, strong warrior two. Bring your left hand down to your left leg. Turn your right palm up and reach up, right up towards the ceiling. Now, if it hurts to look up, don't. I mean, I feel good to look up, but if it doesn't feel good to your neck, you can look forward and still reach up through the fingertips. 
One more breath. And on your exhale, come into that side angle. So again, you can put your hand on your chair, your forearm on your chair. You can use your leg. And you can add that top arm if you choose in your side angle. So letting yourself just really find length through both sides of the body. Enjoy feeling that reach through the left fingertips. Feel that long diagonal line down the side of the left side of the body. Good. We're going to come on back to warrior twos. Pressing those feet away from each other as we come. And now we're just going to bring our hands back to be in front of our hearts again. Coming into really a basic warrior two pose here. Now when you bring your hands down, and we're gonna switch to that lunge, you can put your hands down any height you wanna be, and then rotate that left heel so it's reaching directly behind your foot again. Traditional lunge. And we'll bring our right hand to our right hip this time rolling that shoulder up. Remember, you can stay right down there with your hand on your low back. Think of reaching out through the crown of your head, back through that inner left heel. If you like to reach the arm up, you can. One more breath here. And then we're going to release to come on back down with the hand. We're going to step forward to get our feet under us. So just adjust. You know, it depends on what you have underneath your hands there. Get your feet hips distance apart and parallel. And then bend your knees, bring your hands to your hips and rise on up. We're going to inhale the arms all the way out and up. And on the exhale, as our hands come down, top of the head reaches up. Enjoy your mountain pose. That quiet strength, simply standing. Once you're aligned, it feels like you could be in your mountain pose for a very long time. Because you don't feel any stress or strain anywhere in your body. Thighs are gently lifting up. Tailbone is reaching down towards between your heels. Good. And then we're going to release. Arms on down beside us. Shake out just a little bit again. And we're going to come into warrior one this time. So if you have your chair, you can still have the back of it facing you. We're going to step our right foot back. And you can keep your hands on your chair if you have one there because it keeps you with your shoulders square to the front of your mat. This one's usually a shorter stance for most people. You can step your foot back a foot and a half, two feet, three feet, four feet. It doesn't matter. But if you need to widen your stance because you feel unsteady, unbalanced a little bit, you can let your feet be like they're on those narrow railroad tracks, right? And then as you bend that front knee and, and you glance down to make sure you're not be, you're not sending your knee out beyond your toes. You should be able to see your toes. Then you can bring your gaze forward. And let's unfold our arms. Think about a lot of strength right here in the core body, the belly, the low back, and the hips. Because we're going to inhale the right arm all the way out and up overhead. And then as we exhale, we're going to let it slowly come back down right where it was. And then we'll inhale the left arm all the way out and up overhead. And on the exhale again, let the arm slowly, smoothly come back down. Let's do both. Inhale both arms out and up overhead. You can even touch your fingertips together if you want. And as you exhale, let them come on back down. Don't do what doesn't feel good for your shoulders, though. We're going to inhale the arms back up overhead. Wide V, turn your palms to face each other now. Even think about your pinky fingers going inward a little bit. Feel how you're, you're hollowing out your armpits a little bit. You may even want to look up. Feel this lift right at the base of your shoulder blades. You can try if your shoulders bother you, keeping your arms forward too, right? It really depends on you. So one more breath here. And then we'll lower our arms on down. Now we're going to turn sideways on our mat to face the long edge, the right long edge of your mat. Separate your feet at least a little bit wider than your shoulders, and they're fit parallel. And we're going to come forward, so if you like blocks, you can grab blocks and have blocks underneath your hands in front of you. Or you can have your hands down on the floor. All right, that's totally up to you. 
It could be any height. You can be highest height of the blocks. You can be middle. See, see how it feels to let one knee at a time bend. And if that bothers you, don't do it. So if you'd rather just stay centered, you can. If you feel okay to bend one knee and then the other, do. Coming into both the inside and the outside of the legs there. Good, and then finish off. Come on back into center. And bend both your knees a little bit and let your elbows, if possible, come to rest above your knees. And your fingertips might touch there you know, underneath you, or you might even want to interlace your fingers. It kind of really depends on you. But just enjoy. You're in a squat here. Reach back through your tailbone. Think about your back being nice and flat and long. Good. One more breath. And now we're going to come into the, the pose where we're going to stay for a little bit with our breath. Now me, sometimes I prefer to stack blocks up and get out of my hands and put my forearms on blocks. You've got a lot of heights you can be with these blocks. So you can stack them up pretty high, yeah, or you can go down and let them be pretty low and use just one block. So I know some of you are fine to put your hands on the floor and then release the top of the head down towards the floor there. If that's fine for you, go right for it. If you know that is not for your back, don't do it. Take your time, be easy. Knees can be bent in this pose. Knees can be straighter, but you wanna be okay in your own hips and your back. And then just watch your breath now, really accepting those breaths all the way in and all the way out. And it's not like you're holding your breath, but when you inhale, see if you can just feel that tiny little space before you exhale. And then the same thing, when you exhale, at the end of it, there's a tiny little space or pause before you inhale. So if you can just appreciate those little spaces between your breaths, So one more complete, full, deep breath here. And now we've been here a while. So when you're rising up, if you're dizzy at all, really take time. You can keep your feet wider apart if you need to so until you get your head back on top and you feel like you're not dizzy or you can just walk around a little bit if you need to and that feels better. So move through how you need. We're gonna make our way to the other side. <coughs> So as we get ready for that warrior one, you're stepping towards the front of your mat, but the left foot is gonna step back. And that front facing warrior, shoulders stay square to the front of your mat there. Back foot is usually turned out maybe 20 or 30 degrees for most people. You can widen your stance if that feels better for your balance. Let your hands come together in front of your heart for a second. And just feel like don't, don't, don't try to do anything. Let, let's just see how the pose feels. So there's a natural tilt in your pelvis when you're in warrior one. You're not trying to tuck your tailbone forward, which would really throw the back off, right? The tailbone actually reaches down and back towards that back heel a little bit, but you're, you're using your belly a little bit just to stand here. You're using the core of your body. And when you unfold the arms on down beside you, you're gonna use even more when you inhale that left arm all the way out and up overhead. And then as you exhale, you bring it down. So you're engaged right now in your belly, your low back, and your hips. Other arm, inhaling the right arm out and up. And exhaling, letting it come back down, still keeping the belly engaged a little bit. Both arms are going to inhale out and up. If you want to touch your fingertips together, you can. And when you exhale, bring the hands on back down. And we're going to do that one more time. As we inhale the arms up, we're going to keep them up. You can be wide V. You can turn your pinkies towards each other. Maybe even bring a little bit of a lift up with your gaze. 
feel this lift right at the base of your shoulder blades, right? You don't want to feel any kind of compression in your low back. Your low belly is engaging, right? But again, it's not your tailbone tucking up under you. So one more breath here. Feel nice and open through the front of the body. Imagine inhaling up the front of your body and exhaling down the back of your body. And then we'll lower our arms on down beside us. And we're going to turn again for that wide-legged forward bend. So bring those feet out again, two, three, however far apart you want. And then bring yourself on forward and have your hands either on blocks or, you know, if you want to be up really high, you can turn and put the seat of your chair in front of you, right? And then this time, go ahead, bend the knee in time if you can, or maybe it feels better to kind of bend both knees at the same time. Just play around a little bit. And then come on back to be even between your feet, whether your knees are bent or straight and walk your hands over to the right. You may want to use your blocks and just walk a little bit, or you might want to walk to your foot, and then see about bringing your right hand up to your right hip. You can even roll your right shoulder up a little bit if you want. You don't have to do this part. And then come on back down with your hand, and we're going to walk to the other side. So again, you might just use your blocks and kind of bring yourself over a little bit, and you might go all the way to your foot. And then you can bring your left hand up to your left hip. And if you want to roll that shoulder up, there's adding a little bit of a twist there. You can even look up a little towards the ceiling if you choose. And then we'll come on back down with our hands. And now set yourself up again to stay with your breath. Again, you may want to stack your blocks up. You may feel fine to bring your hands down to the floor. Or some people like to hold their ankles. You know, that feels good. If you need to put your elbows above your knees with your knees bent, that will keep your back lengthened. So you could stay right there too if that feels more comfortable or use your blocks for support. And then full breaths. If you can, think of letting yourself even out your inhales and exhales. So when you inhale, count. See what count you get to. See if you can reach that same count when you breathe out. One more breath. Be really mindful again when you're coming up. So if you need to adjust your feet before you come up, do. Again, if you're dizzy, you know, you have a chair there, or maybe you just need to keep your feet wider till your head goes back into feeling normal again. And then bring your feet together. If you need to move through your feet and your ankles a little bit, do. So we are going to leave our mats right where they are, but we're going to walk over to a wall and be able to just put be able to just put a fingertip onto the wall somewhere. You don't need to be on any mat. You just need a little bit of support, spread out a little bit. Yeah, because we're just going to do a little tree. We're going to do a little tree pose. So with your left hand to the wall, we're going to stand on our left foot. And try starting this way, even though you like to pick your foot up off the floor. Put your inner, your, your right heel into your inner ankle for a second. So it's really low, and you've got your toes on the floor, maybe even the ball of your foot on the floor, right? Now for a second, kind of let yourself slump. <laughs> just slump. See how it feels when you just let your weight fall, right? It doesn't feel good, does it? See if you then can start to feel that length up through the top of your head. And there's a length upward in the front of that leg you're standing on. So you're not dropping into that left hip, you're lifting up in the front of the hip. And then you may decide, well, I like to put my foot on my calf. I like to have my foot off the floor. Or I might feel better to keep my toes on the floor, stay right where I was. And then maybe you can play a little bit with bringing your hand off the wall, coming into prayer hands, into tree pose. 
Or maybe you want to rise your arms up higher because lifting the arms overhead really naturally brings more of an uplift, right? So you can play with keeping the hand on the wall. If you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to fall over. Just if you need to come out for a second, shake your foot out, go back in. I know a lot of you like to bring the foot all the way up into the inside of your uh, thigh. So if you like to go up higher in tree pose with that foot, do. But just enjoy. Just play a little bit. Find yourself a really a good focal point there. And then bring your hands on down. Turn to face the wall and put both your hands on the wall and just bend your left knee for a second. Put the Put the heel as close as you can to your buttocks, but your knees side by side. And some of you might want to reach back with your left hand and get a hold of your foot and pull your heel in towards your buttocks a little bit. Only if that feels good. Again, you're trying to keep the knee facing down. And then we're going to release to put that foot down. We're turning right hand to the wall. We're going to come into tree on this other side. So again, at first, just indulge, put the heel on the inside of your ankle. So, you know, that turn out, when you do that, your knee is slightly turned out to about 45 degree angle, right? You're not trying to lay open this, this knee to the side. It angles forward a little bit. And you can play right there. Again, if you drop down, there's really no way you're gonna balance, right? It throws everything off. If you lift up and you feel like, oh, I can very easily with my foot on the floor bring my hands to my heart, or bring my arms overhead, yeah. And then of course, if you're like, well, I like putting the foot up. I like to bring my foot up to my inside of my calf or up to the inside of my thigh. But you know, you can do a tree pose with the foot on the floor, with the toes giving you a little broader base of support. Again, finding a, a spot to focus on. Feeling that lift through the front of the body, feeling the belly gently engaging a little bit. One more breath. And then when you're ready, come down, turn to face the wall, both hands to the wall at first. And then your feet are pretty close together, bend that right knee, flex the foot. You don't have to reach back and get your foot to get a nice quad stretch right there. If you do want to reach back and get the foot, do it. But see if you can pull the heel. If you've got your foot, pull your heel in towards your outer buttocks a little bit, which really gets more into your thigh there. Good, and then we're gonna release and come on down. Shake out a little bit. And we're gonna make our way back to our mats and come down onto our bellies on the floor. So you might need to move your chair off to one side whatever works so that you can kind of see and you're not going to bang into it. But let yourself just come on down and let's, let's just right away come on to our forearms into a nice sphinx pose with our palms facing down, our elbows pretty much under our shoulders unless that is not comfortable for you. So if you need to go lower, go lower with your body, right? You don't have to go up as high into a back bend. You can slide your elbows down like this towards your waist. Or you can even slide your arms up. And all of those relate to your shoulders, right? If you're good to be with your elbows pretty much under your shoulders, go ahead and spread your fingers wide. Bring your gaze a little forward between your hands. Let it feel good, opening up through the front of the body. Good, and then there, just bend your right knee and flex your foot, just like we did at the wall. And you don't have to bend it deeply. You can just bend it a little bit, right? And then bring the foot back down, go back to the top of the toes and go to the other side. Now, feel what happens, just lifting that foot up and flexing it. You feel how your belly works there? And then we're gonna come back down now we're going to come over onto our left side. Now you can stretch your left arm out and lay your head on it and lay on your side here. Or if your shoulder doesn't like that, bring that arm down and put a block or a blanket under your head. That works too, right? And then from here, we're going to do just what we did standing at the wall, a little tree pose. Bring your right foot up like you're putting it on the inside of your calf, or maybe when you're down like this, you might really want to put it up higher onto your inner thigh. 
But as you do now, press into the outside edge of that left pinky toe on the floor. And then you can decide, oh, do I want to stretch my arms up overhead here, laying in your sideline tree pose, right? You can if you want. If you feel like you're going to fall over, go ahead and keep your right hand on the floor. That's fine, too. Just feel that sense of really belly engaging a little bit. Press into the outside edge of that left foot there on the floor. Good. One more breath. And now stretch that right leg back long. We're gonna roll back to our bellies and find your sphinx pose just for a breath there. Because then we just gotta even out. So we're gonna stretch the right arm overhead. Again, be comfortable in your shoulder. Get yourself lined up like you're in mountain pose. And if you press into the outside edge of that right toe, you know, you might pretty easily be able to put that left foot in onto your calf or maybe even up higher on your leg. And you might decide you want to reach your arms overhead. So that is up to you. Just be where you can. Keep your hand on the floor if you need. But don't force it. Let it feel good, you know. Let it feel really easy. You're opening your hip, but you're using your core body. But the floor is supporting you. One more breath, nice. And then let yourself stretch your leg back long again. Roll back to your belly again. Come on to your forearms again, but this time clasp your hands, bend your knees and lift your hips up and come into a half forearm plank. So you're on the flesh above your knees. Really pull yourself towards the front of the mat. You are trying very hard to get pulled, but you're obviously your arms don't move. It's, it's the angle in your shoulders and elbows that changes a little bit, but really keep the belly firmly engaged. Keep pulling towards the front of your mat. Keep pressing down into your forearms. Really feel that core body there. Nice. So one more breath there. And then we're going to release and come back down and we'll make our way back towards pose of a child and we all know how different this is for us. So if your knees bother you, don't, don't even bother to try to shift your hips way back. You know, you can stay with your bottom up in the air. You can shift your hips back towards your heels with your knees separating as wide apart as you want. And of course, you can leave your arms overhead and soft, or you can bring your arms back down alongside your legs with the palms turning up. But that is really changes the feeling of the pose, right? Where your arms are. So be mindful and take care. Don't, don't push through anything. It should feel like a relief for your low back and your hips. Not uncomfortable. Good. So one more breath there. If you got your head turned to one side, you might want to turn it to the other so that you even yourself out. Now when you get ready to come up to sitting, you can use your hands to help you however you want. Bring your legs on around in front of you and stretch them on out. And if you know sitting on the floor is like less than fun, you can always grab a blanket and put a blanket underneath you, right? So there are blankets on all these shelves. You know, you can grab one if you need one. And let's just try this. Let's try bringing our left leg out just a little ways, okay? Just a little ways away from you. And if you're able to bend this left knee, do and bring this foot in towards coming to the midline. Now, that often isn't good either. So sometimes putting a block under it will help right, so, to support you so that it doesn't hurt, doesn't hurt your knee, doesn't hurt your hip. Or the other thing is forgetting that entirely and leaving that leg long, right? You don't have to bend the knee because all we're going to do is think of coming forward from here. So think about letting your hands come forward in front of you, giving you support. Flex through this left leg. Feel that heel on the ground. Draw it back towards you, and you're pretty quick going to feel this in your inner thigh. All right, so it doesn't take much. 
just be mindful as you come forward. Take your time. Let yourself just enjoy. Keep the knee and the toe facing up towards the ceiling. And again, if this knee is not bent, this leg can be out straight, it's fine. Just like being in a wide angle, right? Good. So one more breath there. And then we're going to come up. And now, put your hand on that leg that's long, that right leg. Slide it down, maybe to your shin, maybe to your ankle. And bring your hand onto your hip. Roll your shoulder up here. So you're coming into side stretch. And that might be enough. You know, you might feel really, you may even want to put your hand on your ribs. Kind of explore how your rib cage feels there. You may decide you want to stretch that arm up. You know, you can be all the way up towards the ceiling with your hand if you want. That gives you even more of a stretch. Or reach over towards your foot with your hand. So you're reaching into side stretch that way. And then we're going to rise up. Take your time as you come on back up. And all we're going to do is switch legs. So again, different leg, different story, right? So. You know, this leg, if you feel like, wow, I'm, even if I come forward, that is way too much pressure in my knee, just don't do it, you know? You can keep the leg long and still come forward. Or you can let yourself kind of adjust a little bit where the foot is, use that block if you need. And then again, as you come forward, be aware of that long leg, make sure you're not rolling it, right? You don't want to roll it backwards, and you don't want to roll it forwards. You want the knee and the toe to be up. And then when you come forward, you'll again feel the hamstring. You'll feel your inner hamstring in particular and the inside more of the thigh. And you'll feel the back of the leg as well. So don't be mindful, don't push it. Take your time to where you feel a nice little easy, well, it doesn't feel easy. Right away it feels pretty deep stretch, but Keep engaging that heel down towards the ground and kind of pull it back towards you so you're actually engaging as you stretch. Good, one more breath. And then we're gonna slowly come back up and let your hand come to your leg, slide it down again, bring your other hand, depending on what side you're on, it's most of us our right hand to our hip. And then you can take your time from there. You may just want to stay there. You might want to put your hand onto your ribs. I actually like to feel the ribs front and back myself. Or you can stretch your arm up, right? Or you can reach that right arm down towards your head, coming even deeper in the side stretch. So totally up to you where you go with this side stretch. going to slowly make our way back up. Use your belly to help you. And then just bring, use your hands to bring your feet on forward. Let your knees come up for a second here. And then see about just bowing your head down towards your knees. Let your back round a little bit. Let it feel good. And then we'll slowly come all the way back into a long spine there. And you can use your hands to kind of help yourself lengthen upward. And we are going to come down onto our backs on the floor. So if you like rolling down through your spine, it is certainly not for everybody's back. But if you like rolling down, you can. I mean, you can use your hands like this behind your thigh, thighs and curl your tailbone up and let yourself kind of roll down through your spine, but only if that feels good, right? So take your time getting down. Once you're down there, let your right knee come on into your chest and extend your left leg down long on the floor. Take your time, feel your right leg gently coming into your hands. Resist a little bit with your hands. And now let your head just roll side to side a couple of times. So it's like you're rolling through the back of your head, just easily, letting your neck release, 
You don't have to go any farther than you want to. And now bringing the head back into center, looking back at the ceiling, we're gonna switch legs. Left knee is gonna come in, right leg's gonna stretch long. You can hold behind your thigh or below your knee. Flex your feet, feel your leg coming into your hands. And then again, you might wanna roll the head a little bit side to side. Let yourself feel that ease of releasing your neck. You don't have to go fast or anything. I mean, you might want to even just stay on one side if you find a tight place and just stay and breathe. And then bring your gaze back to the ceiling if it's not already. And go ahead and put both feet on the floor and bring your arms down alongside you. We'll set up for a little bridge pose. Feet, you want your feet a little bit wider than they are in mountain pose, but you still want your feet parallel to each other. And then bring your arms really close into you, as close as you can get them towards your torso. And bend your elbows to 90 degrees. Let your palms face each other. Now start to press into the backs of the arms. Don't lift up anything because when you press in the back of the arms, it automatically lifts your chest. Your spine is off the floor to a certain extent, right? So roll your shoulders under even more. Now you're really on the outsides of the, the backs of the shoulder blades there, and then lift your hips up. So when you lift up, you feel your quads working, okay, but you really don't want to feel this in your back. So if it feels kind of wrong, put your hips back down, change how far your feet are, your heels are from your buttocks. That can really change the feeling of a bridge pose. So you can experiment a little bit. You can go up and down. You can let yourself vary your feet a little bit. And if you find that spot where you want to stay, feel free to release your arms long or to keep your elbows bent. Or if you're more than happy to get a block and come onto a block for resting on the block, you can come into that restorative bridge pose, into Really, really totally letting yourself relax on the block. And just letting the block support you and letting your back release. So you know, you don't have to wait for me. You can always move up and down from bridge. You can, if you like, stay supported on the block and supported bridge and bring your feet up in the air or play a little bit with leg lift. You don't have to do any of those things. You're more than welcome to let yourself come into whatever feels good for you, really. Good job, I'm going to get the light, but then we also need to, once we come down, do a little bit of a twist. So, be mindful when you do get ready to come down from your bridge pose. Let your knees come in towards your chest. And then, once you are down with your knees in, go ahead and put your feet on the floor again, but separate your feet really wide on your mat so that they come kind of towards the outside edges. And then let your knees come from the right side to the left side in your own time. So you can exhale when they go to one side, inhale when they come back up, exhaling when they go to the other side. Or some of you might like to just stay with your knees hanging out on one side. And some of you might prefer that you don't widen your feet so much. <laughs> so. So take your time, let yourself, if there's something else that your body is craving to do right now, by all means, let yourself do it. If you need another kind of a twist, maybe you prefer a little bit of a deeper twist to bring your knee in and across the body. There could be any number of things that sound good to you right now. Really take your time.
with your breath, watching your breath, accepting your breaths in and out. So there's nothing you need to do in order to breathe. And the breaths will start to quiet and they'll change a little bit off and on, but the breath starts to become quieter, usually a little more shallow and your body wants to follow the breath to that quieter, more relaxed place. All you need to do is just keep refocusing back to the breath. Trust that your body is going to get what it needs from all you just did. And just give yourself the gift of these few minutes and allow yourself to completely and fully relax.
in and goes out. And feel the firmness of the ground supporting you as you come back into wanting to move again physically. So if your fingers and your toes can start wiggling and moving at first, then your hands, your feet might want to join, and your eventually your arms, your legs, moving the way that feels good, whether you need to, need to stretch or bend. Take your time. You know you're welcome to stay there on your back. You're welcome to roll to either your right or your left side. If you're comfortable to be on your side, you can relax into a fetal position there with your knees soft. And just Give yourself a little bit longer to adjust. But you feel like when you are ready to rise up to sitting, it kind of feels like the next natural thing to do to get back to have your head again on top. So. Once you get up though, make sure you get comfortable. You can close your eyes, stay internally focused so that you can really let your body find its way into the best way for you to sit for your hips. And once you're seated comfortably, you can lengthen up through the top of your head so you feel that sense, almost like the central column of your spine is supporting you. Your head is floating up there on top and it's very easy to breathe, feeling the breath coming into the belly. Just enjoying letting yourself come back to being physical again there. And on your next exhale, let your hands come to meet in front of your chest, in front of your own heart. And wishing each one of you a very joyful day. Namaste. Happy